pagination is the mechanism to load more items. In your app that could look like the infinite scroll that you know from social media apps. So as soon as the user reaches the bottom of the page, the app loads new data. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can set up your API to support that pagination feature, which is built into Bravo. Note that not every API supports pagination, but we're going to have a look at how you can find that out in a bit. Now let's start into the video. First, we're going to discuss the question, when should you use pagination? After that, we're going to have a look at how to actually implement it inside of Bravo Studio. For that, I'm going to tell you about the different pagination types that Bravo currently supports. At the end, we're even going to have a look at a practical example using Airtable. So when should you use pagination? The quick answer is whenever you can. Pagination allows for a smoother user experience since less data is loaded. It reduces data loading time and saves network traffic and battery. Especially if your app is loading data from a large database, loading everything at once can result in slow performance or even crashing the whole app. If you get timeout issues, so the error code 408, then it might be worth having a look at pagination. All in all, these advantages are pretty cool stuff, which is why we recommend to always use it if your API supports it. How do you set up pagination for your API inside of Bravo Studio? When you select a request inside of your API collection, you find the tab Pagination here. These settings allow you to configure the pagination exactly as your API requests them. The first thing that you're going to have to select is the type of pagination your API is using. The type of pagination is not something you as the user can choose yourself. Your API most likely only supports one specific type. For Airtable or Reddit, for example, the type would be Seek. But if you're using the API of WordPress or GitHub, you would use Page. To find out the type that your API uses, check out the API's documentation. If you are new to reading API documentation, make sure to check out the guide I did on that on this channel. Inside of the dropdown for type, you can find three options. Offset, page, or seek. Pagination of the type offset is implemented using two parameters. One is called limit and the other one offset. I'm going to put a sample request here. The limit parameter is used to tell the API how many records should be included in the response. The offset parameter indicates how many elements should be skipped, because you don't want to have the same records twice. So if this is the request for the first page, then this would be the request for the second one. The offset of the second request has as many elements as were shown in the first request. We don't want to show the elements of the first request again. The page type functions a little differently. Here, the backend has already divided all of the records into separate pages. So when we request page 5, the API knows exactly which records to return. This is the pagination type that you've probably already encountered in your day-to-day -day life. In the URL of a lot of websites, you can see on which page you're currently on. Sometimes a second parameter is added to the URL, the page size. Just as the limit parameter in the offset type, we're now deciding how many records you want to get back from that API. The last type of pagination is seek, which uses a cursor parameter to determine the response value. We're going to have a closer look at the seek type in our example using Airtable. JSON-based solutions like the default pagination that Xano uses are currently not supported with Bravo. Next to the type, you find other fields, like the cursor parameter, for example. You have to fill these inputs exactly as specified in your API's documentation. One important thing to understand is that the default page size that you find here does not determine the length of your list. So in my case, when I have the three here, that it does not mean that I only get three records from the API. This only means that after three records are loaded, the API fetches the next three. If you actually want to limit the records that you receive from the API, you have to use different parameters. For Airtable, for example, it's called max records and looks like this. I'm going to link this Airtable API encoder in the description, of course. Now let's finally get to our real world example. I have already shown you this API request, which requests places from an Airtable database. The database looks like this, which is an example that Airtable provides. 
I have linked it for you in the description if you want to try it out yourself. When using the Airtable API wizard, all of the pagination information is inserted automatically by Bravo. You can select the Airtable wizard when creating a new collection. If you're not using the API wizard, you can also find it in the documentation of course. For that, head over to the table that you're using, then list records and scroll down. Here you find a paragraph about pagination. For the default page size, I chose 3, which is just a random number for this tutorial, because I want to show you that after 3 places are displayed, when you scroll down, the next 3 are loaded. In order to get that infinite scrolling working, you have to bind the data as you usually do with Bravo. So with the pagination set up, hit send, and then select all of the data that you want to display inside of your app. Then head over to your app and start binding. So in my case, I just have this list and then I'm going to bind every image for every place as well as the name. The Figma file that I'm using in this episode is the Bravo Sample Travel App 2.0. I have put a link in the description of course where you can duplicate it. Now all that's left to do is testing it in Bravo Vision. So I'm going to update it with Bravo and now everything should be loaded. You can see that the list is loaded as usual. The effect kicks in when I scroll down. After a couple of records, you can see that the list stops and Bravo fetches the new places. This way you have a smooth user experience when the user scrolls through all of these endless options. I hope this video has helped you understand what pagination is and encouraged you to try it out for your app. If it did, I would be happy about a like and if you considered subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It With Jonas every other Tuesday. Bye.